And we're back. What's up everyone? I'm Nick and I'm very excited because now that we covered really all of the really basic things in Swift UI, we can start to get into some of the cooler things in the next couple of videos. And this video is the start of that and we're gonna look at conditional logic. And basically all that is is using like if else statements in our code so that we can show and hide different elements at different times or even to different users. So for example, if we had an app and we wanted to show a different screen, whether the user was signed in or signed out, we would use a very simple statement saying, if user is signed in, show this screen, else if they're not signed in, show a different screen. So that's the basics of conditional statements, but we are going to dive into some of the additional logic that we can use. We're gonna look at all the different conditional logic that we can put into our app, which is not only the if else statement, but also the if not, and we're also gonna look at how to use or and and operators to really get advanced with that logic. Now we're gonna keep the views very simple in this video because we're not focused on what is actually gonna show and hide. We're gonna be focused on the actual logic in these if else statements, but you're gonna use these if else statements all the time in your production apps. So it is very important to understand the logic. And then in your own time, you can actually start putting in some really cool views into this logic. All right, I am back in our Xcode project and this is gonna be a fun one. So I hope you guys are excited. Let's create a new file as we always do. Right click the navigator, new file, and it will be a Swift UI view. We're talking about conditional statements. So let's make this conditional bootcamp. Go ahead and click create. Once you're in the file, go ahead and click resume on that canvas and let's get started. So let's start this very simply. Let's just create a V stack. Let's add some spacing of 20 and open the brackets. And at the top of the V stack, I'm going to add a button. I don't care how fancy the button looks. So let's just use the title string protocol approach. And we're just going to call this circle button and press enter on the action. And then we're just going to leave it blank for a second. And below the button, let's add a circle with a frame of 100 by 100. Now we're going to add a conditional statement to our view. And all that means is we're going to check some logic and based on whether or not that logic is true or false, we're going to show a different item on the screen. So right now we're going to add some logic on whether or not we want to show the circle on the screen. So let's start by adding a at state at the top. This will be a variable and we'll title it show circle. It will be of type bool and we'll set it equal to false. Again, bool is just a variable that is always either true or false and we're starting it at false. And when we click this button, we want to change this show circle to from false to true. So we could call show circle equals true and this would change it to true. But if we click the button and it was already true, it's just gonna set show circle equal to true again. And in this example, we wanna set it back to false so that we can switch between false and true. So in Swift UI, there's a super handy feature we can call dot toggle. And this is just going to toggle or switch the variable show circle between true and false. So if we click it and it's true, it's gonna to go to false. If we click it and it's false, it's gonna to go to true. Let's put the description of the current state of show circle into the button title. So let's add a colon here. And then I'm gonna use the forward slash, open and close parentheses, and let's call show circle dot description. Resume the canvas. So you can see that it says false here and that's because it, we set it equal to false at the top and when we click it, it's going to switch from false to true, false to true. And now we want to add a conditional statement to show the circle only if show circle is equal to true. So that's very simple. We can just write if show circle is equal to true, open the brackets. And we will cut our circle here and put it into the brackets. So in a conditional statement, we add some logic saying if show circle and this double equal sign can be read as is equal to so if show circle is equal to true 
only if it's true, whatever in this bracket is going to show on the screen. So we can see right now that it's false and we don't see a circle. If we click it, the circle will pop up on the screen. I'm going to add a quick spacer at the bottom of our V stack just so it's always pushed to the top. So if it's true, if it's false, and now we can switch between this and this is awesome. In Swift in general, there's a easier, faster way of writing this. So instead of if show circle is equal to true, we can just write if show circle. So Swift already automatically knows that this means if show circle is true. So it's going to do the exact same thing with a little bit less code, nice and handy. And I just want to show you that we can also do the opposite. So if show circle is equal to false, put the circle on the screen. So when it's false, the circle is now on the screen and we can toggle it. And there's a shorthand way of writing this as well. And all we do is if not show circle. So we put an exclamation point before the variable and that basically means not. So if not show circle or if show circle is equal to false, put the circle on the screen and we can see that here. Let's put it equal to if show circle is equal to true. So let's get rid of the exclamation point. And what if we wanted to keep this logic if show circle was true, but we also wanted to add some logic if it was false. Well, we can add at the end of this bracket, we can add else and then open the brackets. So if it's true, this will run. If it's false, else, otherwise, this will run. And then let's just put in a rectangle and let's give it a frame of 100 by 100. So if show circle is true, we have a circle. If it's false, we have a rectangle. And we can test it out on our live preview. When it's true, we have a circle. When it's false, we have a rectangle. So this is awesome. I'm going to add another button here. Let's do button. And this one will use the title string protocol approach again. And this will be the rectangle button. And in the action, let's press enter. And when we click this rectangle button, I want to toggle whether or not we want the rectangle on the screen. So let's create another variable below this show, this show circle. We'll do at state var show rectangle of type bool equals false. It's the same thing as the circle. So in the name of this button, let's just like we did up here, let's forward slash open and close parentheses and we'll call show rectangle dot description. And when we click it, we are going to show rectangle dot toggle. Let's resume to make sure our button is on the screen. And now we have two different variables that we can reference. We have the show circle as well as the show rectangle. And right now our code, this conditional statement is only looking at if show circle. So what we can do is instead of just if show circle and then if not show circle show rectangle, we can do an else if. So we'll do else if show rectangle. So every time we update the view, it's going to ask if is show circle true, because then it's going to put a circle. Otherwise, else if show rectangle is true, put the rectangle. So if show circle is false, this is not going to execute. And if show rectangle is false, this is not going to execute. So if both are false, we actually are going to have nothing on our screen right now. And we can see that on our preview, both are false. And if I put show circle button to true, we can see the rec the circle. I'm going to put it back to false. And if I put and if I put the rectangle button as true, we can see the rectangle. But now what happens if I put the circle as true and the rectangle as true? Well, we only see the circle. And that's because the system is reading this in order. And it's always going to ask if show circle is true first then put the circle. So if they're both true right now, it's going to end this conditional statement right here with the circle and it's never going to get to this part. But of course, when this show circle is false, then it will read through this second part. I hope that's not too confusing. And let's add one more. We'll do else. 
open the brackets. So now if both are false, we can add more logic. And then let's add a rounded rectangle with maybe a corner radius of 25. And let's give this a, another frame. We'll do width of 200, height of 100. And we don't need the alignment. So this part's only gonna execute if both of these are false. So right now both are false and we can see that rounded rectangle. If I put circle back to true, we see the circle. If we put both to true, we're still gonna see just the circle. If only rectangle is true, we're gonna see the rectangle. And if both are false, we see the rounded rectangle. So hope you guys are understanding how these if else else if statements work. And let's take this one step further. What if when show circle was true, we wanted to show the circle, but also when show rectangle is true, we want to show the rectangle. Well, we can just add two separate statements. So for right now, I'm going to comment out this else rounded rectangle. And I'm going to make this if show rectangle its own conditional statement. So we don't need this else. So now we just have two separate conditional statements. If show circle, put the circle. If show rectangle, put the rectangle. So both are false, we don't see anything. And if I put the circle, circle is true, we see the circle. If I put the rectangle, rectangle is true, we see the rectangle. If I put the circle as false, we just see the rectangle. So that's because these are now two different conditional statements. Let's add one more conditional statement for the rounded rectangle. Let's uncomment this out. I'm gonna hold the command button and press the backslash. And this statement, I'll get rid of this, we'll say if show circle, and then we're gonna have two ampersands, the and sign, and we're gonna say show rectangle, and then open the brackets. So this double ampersand means and. So if show circle is true, and show rectangle is true, then put the right rounded rectangle on the screen. So let's resume that and check it out. Both are false, we don't see anything. The circle is true, we see just the circle, because that's just this statement. Let's put the circle back to false. When the rectangle is true, we see just the rectangle, because that's this statement. But we haven't seen the rounded rectangle yet, because it's looking for a situation when both the show circle and the show rectangle are both equal to true. So if I put them both equal to true, we'll see that that rounded rectangle now pops up as well at the bottom. And that's this and sign, and we can add more and signs if you had a whole bunch of different variables that you wanted to add, and you wanted to make sure they were all true or they were all false, you could do that. And we can also customize this, so if we wanted to add this rounded rectangle only when show circle was true, but show rectangle was false, we'll add that exclamation point saying not show rectangle. So if show circle is true and show rectangle is false, put the rounded rectangle. And when I click the circle button, circle is true, rectangle is false, and that's why we see the rounded rectangle. We can also add the exclamation point before the show circle. So if not show circle and not show rectangle, which so if they're both false, put the rectangle rounded rectangle on the screen. And you can see right now they're both false. And as soon as I toggle one of them to true, that rounded rectangle is gonna go away. And if I put them back both to false, then this is true. The last and final bit of conditional statement I wanna show you guys is the or. So let's get rid of the exclamation points here. And instead of double ampersand, let's do double, I don't even know what they call this, but it's the line. So it's like on my keyboard, it's underneath the, the delete button. Um, it's just a straight up line. I'm sure there's a technical name for it. But when we do these two lines, it means or. So if show circle is true, or show rectangle is true. So if either one are true, this will go onto the screen. So if we show the circle, show circle is also true. So that's one of these two statements. And now we see the rounded rectangle. If I put, if I put the circle to act to false and put the rectangle, we can now see the re rounded rectangle is still on the screen. 
If I put them both to true, the rounded rectangle is also still on the screen because the or is still valid. So show circle is true and show rectangle is true, but we only needed to meet one of those criteria because this is an or statement. So if either or, and in this case, both are true, we'll put the rounded rectangle on the screen. Okay, so I know that was a lot to take in. There was a lot of if, else, or, and statements that I'm talking about. Uh, but most common in SwiftUI, I would say, is just this very simple if show circle, do this. And before we go, I want to show you one quick real world example that I use all the time. So let's highlight all of our code here. And I'm going to press the command backslash button to comment it out. Let's add one more state. We'll do at state var is loading of type bool equals false. Because often in your app, you're going to have situation where you have to load the data and in that situation you can call if is loading open brackets and we're going to use a new view here that we haven't used but it's called progress view and this is just the basic loading indicator uh, that is native to ios and let's add a button to toggle it we'll use the title we'll do is loading of and then we'll <clears throat> we'll add a colon We'll do forward slash, open and close brackets, open and close parentheses. We'll put is loading dot description. And when we click this button, let's do is loading dot toggle. Let's resume the canvas one real one last time. Is loading is false. And when is loading is true, we now have that loading indicator. So we learned a ton of conditional logic, but very simple use cases like this are very, very common in apps. So I recommend going, to, going and creating a view and playing around with a lot of this if else if statements just to get comfortable with it. Uh, but something like this is more common in an app where it's just very simple. If is loading, do this, and then you would have uh, else. And then in here, you would put the content. So if it's done loading, you would put whatever you wanted to show on the screen. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it as always. I'm very interested to hear if you guys understood what's going on here or if you got confused. Uh, so leave a comment below if I confused you or you think I did a good job explaining this because there's a lot of logic and a lot of moving parts to this. So I want to make sure that you guys did understand what I'm talking about. And I've been talking kind of quick because I want to keep this video short. Uh, but leave a comment. Let me know. And as always, I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you guys in the next video.